gorgeous, Sabrina here. Welcome to the fabulous 1930s. Today I'm showing you a historically accurate themed makeup tutorial based on the practices, principles, and trends that were very popular in the 1930s. But first I'll give you a little bit of background on this decade. The art of a woman's makeup really took off in the 1930s and it was heavily influenced by Hollywood and full color magazines which were becoming all the rage at this time. And makeup was also a way for a woman to express her independence as well as her femininity. Beauty icons of this time period included Greta Garbo, Myrna Loy, Mae West, Jean Harlow, Constance Bennett, my personal favorite, Carol Lombard, and who can forget Ginger Rogers. In the 1930s, Max Factor and Elizabeth Arden were becoming household names, but it's also during this time when popular brands today like Boots No. 7 and Alme were founded. Now the look that you see in the 30s compared to the 20s is a lot more natural and much more wearable than it was in the 20s. In this video today, I'm going to show you the more colorful side of the 30s and get away from that neutral spectrum. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with this look. Let's head on back to the 1930s. I'm starting this look with my blending shade. This is Max Blanc Type. Applying this onto the brow bone is simply going to help the blending process go a lot more smoothly. First color I'm using is Max Man Catcher, and this is a light lavender eyeshadow. I'm applying it onto the lid with a brush from Wet n Wild. Popular eyeshadow colors in the 30s included blues, greens, pinks, and purples. They were applied lightly and in shapes that extended beyond the natural eye. This helped to enlarge the eyes and it added further feminine emphasis to the face. An eyeshadow was typically applied from the lash line all the way up to the brow bone with a deeper color sometimes added into the crease to give that deep set eye look. And now that I have a good amount of that deposited, I'm going back with a blending brush and blending along the edges. Next eyeshadow I'm using is Max Nocturnal and I'm using the same Wet n Wild brush I used before. I'm simply turning it on its side and using this to deposit the color directly into the crease on the outer portion of the eye. Contouring the eyes with a lighter shade on the lid and a deeper color in the crease was very popular in the 30s and this created that deep set effect. I'm also adding a little bit more man catcher onto the outer corners of the eye and extending it past the natural eye shape and this was done to help enlarge the eyes. For my eyeliner, I'm using a deep brown. This is Max Teddy and lining the lash line from the innermost portion of the tear duct all the way to the outer edges. Eyeliner was very popular. It was most often found in black and brown shades. There was a lot of heavy emphasis placed on the lash line and so I'm going back and tight lining the upper waterline with that same pencil to create the illusion of really thick lashes. And let's talk about brows because they were very unusual in the 30s compared to most of the other decades that I've done previously. Eyebrows were plucked very thin, basically plucked out of appearance if not removed completely, and then they were penciled back in. And the shape of the eyebrow that you'll see in this time period is a rounded shape and it extends out past the eye to the temple area. Thankfully, my brows are thin naturally, so I'm not going to take a lot of time to fill them in. I'm simply using a pencil to make the line and extend it out to the temple. Women would also apply petroleum jelly to set the brows, and this also gave them that coveted shiny appearance. So I'm going back with Vaseline here on a mascara spoolie and applying it onto the brows. And like so many other decades in makeup history, mascara was very popular and it was widely used. However, this is the one decade when you start to see it being used a lot more on the lower lashes. And so we're going to do a lot of mascara application there in this look. I'm using Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and packing it onto the lower lashes. I am so happy to tell you that false eyelashes were very popular in the 30s. 
Now, there are a lot of conflicting reports about who invented the first false eyelashes. Some say it was Charles Nestler who held the first patent in 1902 and then sold his brand to Nesto Lashes in 1903. However, there is also the first pair that was invented in 1916 by cinema director David W. Griffith. And they were mainly used for actresses and on Hollywood sets. It took nearly 15 years for false eyelashes to become not only popular, but also available to the general public. And Vogue actually introduced them to their readership in the early 30s. And even though they were very popular in the 30s, they would not become popular again until the 50s. Foundation was becoming more widely used and a soft ivory complexion was the desired style. It was still being just as heavily applied as it was in the 20s. So we want to pack the foundation on. Don't be afraid to layer a couple layers to get that desired flawless complexion. Translucent powder was popular, but it wasn't applied heavily. It was applied with a very light hand. The idea was to keep the skin glowing and soft, just like the Hollywood actresses of the time. Contouring the face became very popular thanks to Hollywood, and so I'm using a bronzer from Bare Minerals in the shade Skinny Dip and applying it onto the hollows of the cheeks. I'm also applying this down the sides of the nose and finally applying this along the hairline. I'm going with a cream blush from NYX. This is in the shade Boho Chic. Like most of the other things that you see with the face in the 30s, blush was applied much more lightly compared to how it had been applied in the 20s. It was usually pink or brown in color and cream finishes were very popular because it gave the skin that glowing look. The way blush was applied was also a little bit different. It was applied onto the cheeks and then swept back towards the temples. For my lips, I'm going with Milani's Flirty Fuchsia. Popular lipstick colors of the time include Chinese reds, orange tones, and in the early to mid 30s is when you see light roses and raspberries. In the later 30s is when you see the primarily brighter red tones. The popular shape for the lips was called the rosebud, which was much more natural looking compared to its 20s counterpart, which was the Cupid's bow. So to accomplish this shape, you want to draw above the natural lip line on the upper lip only. And so I went back with a lip brush and went outside of that line slightly and brought it down to the corners. And then I also made sure to round the Cupid's bow at the top. And that's the final effect, much more wearable than what we saw in the 20s. And to finish this look, I am applying a highlighter. I applied this onto the tops of the cheeks and also down the bridge of the nose to give that Hollywood glowing skin look. And let's not forget about nails because they were very important in this decade. Popular colors included pale roses, light pinks, creams, reds, corals, lilacs, emerald greens, golds, and silvers. And there was a very interesting trend in the way that polish was applied. It was applied only onto the center of the nails with the half moon shape at the bottom and the tips left bare. During the end of the 30s, the half moon shape at the bottom was kept bare, but women started applying polish to the ends of the tips. Let me know which decade you would like to travel to next. It could be any decade, even if we've already visited it, because there are some trends in past decades that we have yet to even touch on yet. If you want to do 70s punk, let me know. If you want to do 90s clueless, let me know. It's completely up to you where we go next. Popular vote will get the win. Also, I'm thinking about starting a transformative series where I transform myself into different characters and entities of all kinds. So if you have a request along those lines, feel free to let me the, know that as well. And I would love to hear which characters and which things you would like to see me transform into. I hope you enjoy this series. I can't wait for it. The next installment, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for traveling back with me today to the 30s and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>